I'm gonna be running uh, the Count Lucanor. Uh, the category I'm running in is uh, for the best ending, so it's the best possible ending of the entire game, uh, which has a couple more extra steps than the any percent run. Uh, but basically, we're gonna skip this first cutscene. Uh, might cut, might go black for like a few seconds because just a flaw of the game. But um, so the run starts basically the second I hit A for, on this first dialogue. So I'll just go uh, three, two, one. So basically the story of this game goes, uh, we play as young Hans here. And uh, he basically just turned 10. It's his birthday. And he's uh, very upset that his mom is too poor to throw him a party. Because uh, dad's away at war. And uh, so there's no really any money coming into the household. So he... Basically tells his mom, like, I'm sick of this, I, I want to have a birthday party, I'm going to go on an adventure and become rich. So, uh, he storms out of the house and mom's like, oh hey, don't leave without all this stuff because I'm a good mother. So she's going to give him a cane, some gold coins, and a wedge of cheese. And some of those, and all, most of these items are going to come in handy at some point, so... So when we start off here, the game actually does not let us go up unless we uh, say goodbye to our dog, which we do by getting this bone here, and we're going to go give it to him. We have to talk to the dog at least three times again. Alright, there we go, and now I can go on my merry way. And then we're basically just going to have like a long trek uh, through this intro. Uh, the title's gonna pop up, which is kind of a cool little thing there. Um, along this path, we're gonna see many different, like, characters. Uh, if we have the option of interacting with them and giving them these items that we got in order to get items later in the game, but we're not gonna do that. Because we actually need some of the items to make it through some of the, uh, the puzzles. So, um, yeah, I mean, if there's anything that the, uh, the host needs to say. You can say it now because we're basically just going to be walking the whole time. Okay, well, I guess I'll, I'll just, just continue. I just grabbed these two apples, uh, which are going to be very important. I'm actually going to equip equip them now, and I'm going to feed one of them to this little donkey here, because uh, that's needed to kind of bring him up later in the game. Uh, it's actually kind of a funny little thing that happens in the game, uh, what happens with that donkey. So I'm going to equip the cheese now, because we're going to need, need that item next. Uh, but we're going to move along this cliffside. And we're gonna see that ominous looking crow fly overhead. And we have this guy crying over here. Uh, but we're just gonna ignore him. He's uh, crying about his wagon being broken. But we can, like I said, we can give him the gold coin to help him fix his wagon. And then he'll give us something later. But like I said, we're not gonna do that because we need the gold coin. The only character we're actually going to be talking to is this guy coming up. He's a farmer. And that's who we're gonna be giving the cheese to. Um, and you're about to see some illegal activity happening here in just a minute, as soon as I talk to him. Which I do not uh, advise anyone to do. <laughs> Gotta talk to him a couple times, we're gonna match this dialogue. I'll be honest, I don't even remember what they even talk about in this conversation. All I know is he talks about having a picnic and uh, he gives a 10 year old a uh, bottle of wine. And that's the illegal activity. As you see, 10-year-old Hans, drunk off his keister. And he passes out. And that brings us to the next, uh, the next sequence where night, where everything kind of goes weird. And you'll see why in a second. And that save soul message you saw, uh, is basically just a, uh, a notification saying that the game is saved. So we're gonna grab this candle here, because we're gonna need it. And I said that stuff gets weird, there's a river of blood right there. Alright, so while we're going to, moving down here, we're going to snuff out the candle. And I'm going to have to gun, uh, have to remember where, which my path is. Uh, yeah, I kind of overshot a little bit. 
been a while since I've done this, but the reason why I snuffed the candle out is because uh, if I had the candle out, uh, it would trigger a cutscene where he reacts to the monstrous looking goats that are in the area. Yeah, we're going to be seeing some weird stuff as we go along here. Yep, and we have one of the goats chasing us now, so we're just going to try to avoid him at all costs. Yeah, that was basically the... F I just actually discovered that little route uh, a second ago going around the box that way. Normally, I've just been pushing the boxes out of the way, but I didn't realize you can go down to the bottom and just easily squeeze through as if there's nothing. But uh, this little character you see ahead of us is, uh, is a kobold, and he's guiding us to the castle. Uh, the Terebrae Castle, I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, there's an evil Bambi right there. Um, but anyway, we're following him to the castle. He's kind of leading us there, and that's going to be basically where a majority of the game takes place. Again, it's just going to be a lot of walking at this point until we get to the castle, which we're almost there. Oh, is that, is that, uh, was I supposed to have Discord up? Oh, shoot. Uh, I, I can, I can add it in. Hold on one second. Um. Yeah, I'll pause, I'll just pause the game real quick. Uh. I keep forgetting I have OB, I have a. Uh, it's going to introduce a save system. And then there's our merchant there that uh, we uh, saw on the, uh, the road there. How he got in this castle, I don't know, but we're going to talk to him. He's going to give us a key. I'm just going to go through this dialogue. He's just going to introduce his wares to us. And we're good to go. And uh, pay attention to those windows up there. The windows are an important part. So basically, for this whole section, we're just going to be entering doors and leaving. Uh, this room is probably the most we'll do in any room. Let's that's take a little bit of damage, because we actually need to do that. Um, but then we're just going to go to this side. And again, we're just going to enter the room and then leave. Uh, basically, what this does is it passes the time in the game uh, to get to a certain point in the game where we can uh, learn the Kobal's name, which is what we're trying to do. Because basically, the Kobal explained to us at one point that uh, if we learn his name, or guess his name correctly, uh, he'll give us access to the treasures in the castle. And this character is just another person uh, who's a treasure hunter, and we kind of agreed to that we're going to help each other out. But this is the only time in this run that we'll actually see her. And she gives some extra candles, which is good, so. Alright, so now we're just going to head back to the courtyard here, and we're going to uh, do one of the one biggest glitch in the entire game. And that's, we're going to save our game oh, with a gold coin. And as soon as uh, the thing pops up, the interface pops up again, we're going to go in. We're going to equip the apple. And then we're going to eat the apple. And then we're going to load our game. Basically what this does is it tricks the inventory into keeping the apples equipped. So now we have unlimited apples to use, and that's going to come in handy in about a second. But after I get this key from this old lady here. So we can open up more rooms. 
Let's try to get my candles out again. So I usually just go down this uh, this room down here, and again we're just gonna enter, then leave. And there's our donkey friend. And now we're about to abuse this donkey really badly. So we're gonna interact with them. And again, see how I have the gold coins equipped? It's gonna it thinks I have the apples equipped still. So I'm gonna give the apple uh, give the donkey an apple. And he's gonna poop out some gold coins. And I'm basically gonna keep doing this until I have ten gold coins. So about twice more after this. Or one more time after this. Oh, it's very finicky about where you pick it up. So get my candles out. And then we're gonna move this way to this side of the castle. There's gonna be a little uh, cutscene that plays after this, after we enter this room and leave. Okay, so this is now 3 a.m. in the game. Uh, what this means is that uh, there's gonna be enemies patrolling the hallways now. Hopefully we won't see many of them. Uh, but basically this whole section becomes like a stealth horror game, essentially. So, um... After this, we're gonna uh, equip the gold coins and buy this key. That's why we needed the gold coins for. And this is gonna give us access to a part of the... Oh, anyway, going the wrong way here. Um, getting ahead of myself. So we're gonna go back out this way. Yeah, this, uh, this run isn't very like action uh, heavy. It's mostly just a lot of just moving around um, and just like, advancing time but i, I kind of like the story uh it's just a fun little game to uh run uh and then let's, here's our farmer friend he's just ahead on a on a bench right now and he's gonna give us the red key and a crowbar because we gave him the cheese earlier so now we're just gonna leave out this side here we're gonna enter the last two rooms before the second or the last two rooms before we get to the time if you can listen carefully, you can actually hear the whispering of our patrolling enemies. This is why I actually go under these tables to hopefully avoid them if they're if they do happen to be patrolling, but so far so good. Now we're gonna head back into the courtyard. And then hopefully if we did everything according to plan. We're gonna go up here and the rightmost window should be lit. And it is. So we're going to go to the upstairs portion of the castle. And we're going to enter that the rightmost room. Which we can now open with the gold key that we just purchased. I'm just going to unequip my candles because there is actually a... One of the flaws of this game is when you're matching through the dialogue, um, you can accidentally drop your candles because it's the same button. Now we just have to hide in here while our cobalt friend does his little rhyme. We're actually going to learn his name because he says his name just now. His name is Petronio. There we go. Didn't have to do any of the puzzles. Because basically the rooms that we've been going in and out of uh, have been puzzle rooms. And each time you solve a puzzle, you get a letter. Um, and then you go back to this big room that, that, we're, that you're about to see in a couple seconds. Um, and you have to organize the letters in, in the way that spells out his name. And that's how you get to the, the next part of the game. But since we learned his name without uh, doing any of the puzzles, um, we could just go right there. And there will be a dialogue. So, host, if you have anything to say, this is just a cutscene that we'll just be uh, walking through. And that's yes. a lot of dialogue. Uh, if uh, chat can hear me now, I uh, hope they can spam their favorite Pokemon in chat for whatever reason. I don't know. That's the that's the first thing I can imagine of. But uh, if chat can hear me, then I do have a donation. Beautiful. Chat is hearing me. All right. Beautiful. And I do have a donation. <clears throat> I have ten dollars by Garlip saying, uh, "Mega hype for this run. You got this, Jace. 
just remember to count the Lucanor, okay? I counted 10 so far, so here's $10. Thank you very much for your donation, Garlips. Very much appreciate it. Uh, with that, back to you. Okay, so as you saw, that was kind of a trap there that they set for us. We learned his name, but there is no treasure down here, just a lot of blood. But what I'm doing here is is setting myself up for a later uh, mechanic that we're going to be doing. Um, just placing some candles down because this area is dark and there's something we have to chase later. And I'll explain it once we get to that section, but we're going to talk to this guy who's definitely seen better days. So yeah, basically this is a one another adventure that made his way down here and he's missing both of his legs and he's losing a lot of blood. And he's basically telling us that we need to find this medallion uh, hidden in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our move this way, and this is gonna be this section of the game can be kind of scary only because this game could kill your run, or this part of the game can kill the run. These guys deal a lot of damage, so I'm, I'm gonna basically be careful this time around. So I usually like to push these cages around to kind of. Uh, keep something in between myself and those guys and so far so good because they deal a lot of damage in fact my last few uh, practice runs uh, ended with those guys killing me so uh, right now we just got bitten by a little worm that looks like uh, the result of a bad night of fast food but uh, right now we're skipping a major puzzle by using the walking stick that we got in the beginning of the game from mom to pull that lever down. And then this is the medallion we need to bring back to the uh, the door that he was talking, that uh, our good bleeding friend there uh, was talking about. So we're gonna try to avoid these worms too. They can damage you too. And it's kind of annoying. But we're just gonna stick to this right wall. Hopefully we can avoid those uh, monsters that kind of look like a uh, crumb from uh, that cartoon are ah, all real monsters from back in the day if anyone remembers that all right so we're gonna put the medallion in here and it's gonna open this door here and then we can go we're gonna go talk to our bleeding friend again I really don't need to pull my candles out because uh, there's candles everywhere right now we're just gonna master that and he's gonna give us a red seed which is going to come in handy later. But now we're going to head back into that big room again. Where we need to avoid those enemies once more. But this time I'm going to stick to the southern part of this room. Oh, oops. Uh, let's try to be careful here. I don't want him to attack me. Oh god, go away. Yes, he... Ugh. See, one more hit and I'm, I'm done. <laughs> so I gotta be extra careful. Oh, oh. Okay. My heart just stopped for a second. Okay, so now we're in this big room here. Uh, that house might look familiar from the beginning. That is Hans's house. How it got here, we do not know. But what we're here, really here for is this well in the background or behind the house. And we got a nice big bucket of blood, which is what we need to use with that red seed. Oh, and now the worm is hungry. He wants some sweets, but we don't have any sweets on us, at least right now. So we're going to keep going, ignore the worm's need for sweets. And hopefully we can avoid the last pass through with these enemies. I can see one over there. I'm gonna go around this side. Oh shit. I'm gonna try. There we go. Okay. Playing it safe. There we go. Okay, now that we made it through there. We don't have to worry about those guys anymore. So any sort of threat to this run ending is now gone. Unless the game crashes, but... Oh, whoops, you know what? I went too far. I, I got ahead of myself. I have to go into the room up here. 
It's been a while since I've run this, so. <laughs> so we're gonna go in here and plant the seed. I think I just got overexcited that I made it through that room without dying. All right, so now we're gonna fill it with a bucket of blood. Nothing happens, but we're gonna try to leave. Now we got this big red bean stalks about to come out of the ground. All right, now we go talk to what's his face. And as you can see, he is no longer bleeding, and he looks pretty lifeless. He's dead. And then we're gonna get a rusty key from him. Okay, and that voice sounded a lot like Hans's mother. So he's gonna go investigate. And over here is gonna look a little different. It's a little bit more well lit. And our, uh... Our crumb friends are gone. So basically we have a party about... So we're gonna head back into that room. We really don't need the candles right now because everything's pretty well lit. We're gonna use the key to get in here. And we see mom in bed, but we're gonna leave her alone. Yeah, we don't wanna... We don't wanna disturb her. But instead we're gonna give this worm to this cake here because uh, the worm wanted some cake earlier. And then he turns into this uh, beautiful golden butterfly. That we now have to chase, and that's why we put those candles down. Because basically, like I said, there's a flaw in the game where the interact button is the same as dropping candles. So if you try to grab the butterfly and he gets away before you can do that, you'll drop a but you'll drop a candle, interrupting the action of grabbing the actual butterfly, and uh, it could just make the run a lot harder. So let's hope for some good RNG with this one. I come. Oh no. He flew right towards me, and they went away. I'm basically just going to keep tapping A until he flies towards me. Wow, this is probably the worst. There, I got it. Okay. Whew. All right. All right, so now we have the golden butterfly. We're going to equip the walking stick because we're going to need that in a second. But uh, we have a little bit of ways. Uh, so if the host has anything to say, we can uh, do that. Sure. I would love to talk about some of our upcoming incentives. For example, in Rainbow Billy, which is coming up later this morning for all the Americans or in the early afternoon for the Europeans, we have Rainbow Billy, the Curse of the Lala... Rainbow Billy, the Curse of the Leviathan, and uh, we already did reach enough enough money to pat the dog once, but we 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 can pat the dog twice. We can pat the dog again, guys. And currently, we're we're in roughly a fourth in. We're roughly a quarter in. So, we still need a little bit more than $150 for this in the next 7 hours. So, please, you you want to see this dog pad? Then please get your donations in for that. I definitely want to see that dog pad again. Um, also, in uh, later, uh, later today, or tomorrow for some of you, uh, we have uh, level hats, and there we can kill the blowfish. I have no idea what the blowfish is. Do you know what the blowfish is? Probably not. But hey, who doesn't want the blowfish to be see killed? Forty, we're forty-five dollars away from that. So keep the donations coming, guys. Uh, you're all awesome. I wouldn't have expected that we would make it this far just in like the first eight hours of the event. It's all amazing and uh, yeah. Keep the donations coming. You're all awesome. Back to you.
All right, so uh, as you guys probably saw, uh, we did make it out of the castle. Uh, we found out that the Count Lucanor was a fraud. He's a fake wooden doll kind of thing. And we called out the lie because he claimed to be our grandfather, so we showed him the cane. It was like, this was my grandfather's cane, and he didn't recognize it. So he fell apart, and we escaped the castle. So now we're going to be heading home. Uh, we're nearing the close... We're basically close to the end of the run, but we have one more thing left to do. Um, oh, there's our little doggy, Spittle. Uh, he's gonna follow us home. But, uh, but before that, uh, as you can see, we have the crowbar equipped, uh, because that's where the crowbar comes in handy. Uh, so basically, it, we have to go over one more screen, but we're gonna see a familiar character. Um, the merchant. He got hung uh, as a punishment. He was actually a thief. The reason why that wagon was uh, destroyed is because he attacked it in order to steal the wares and to sell them to make money off of them. So he got hung for it. But before we go home, we're going to head back up here to where the castle was, if this looks familiar. Remember, there was a big hole in this wall here. Instead, there's a blood butterfly or whatever which is kind of a hint as, as to what we need but we're going to use this crowbar here to enter this grate so right now i'm going to equip the butterfly which is what we're going to need to oh thought I got stuck on the corner all right now we got our candles out and now we enter this room and what do we have here Look at all this treasure. This is what Han set up for, right? So he got exactly what he wanted. So we're gonna take all the treasure that we see here. And then we're gonna leave. And then we're basically gonna be, uh, this is... This, this whole walk is basically gonna be another, like... I think like 15 20 seconds of just like not, nothing really much happening we're just gonna be walking straight you're gonna see the credits pop up at some point but the run doesn't end there so i mean if the host has any more stuff to say any more donations to read out now's a good time well i do unfortunately not have any donations <laughs> but uh we do have some big boards for example uh, we have, uh, later on, uh, a bit further in the future, we have uh, Lennis Inception, and uh, you can choose the art style. You can choose between 32-bit and good old 8-bit. Currently, 8-bit is quite a lot in the lead, with uh, roughly $280 to $120. So, uh, if you want to see some more modern, well, more modern is uh, quite the accomplishment for 32-bit. But if you want to see 32-bit, then uh, you better get on that, because 32-bit is dragging behind quite a lot. However, we also have We Happy Few coming up. Uh, there you can choose the category our runner is going to burn. Currently, uh, we you can choose between they come from they came from below currently at twenty dollars. We all fall down currently at twenty five dollars or light bearer at fifty dollars and okay that's, one that, that's cent. run that's run. No oh, time <laughs> sorry sorry. <laughs> I didn't know you had that much to say, <laughs> but yeah that was the end of the run right there. As soon as the uh, last line of dialogue happens, uh, the run ends. And then so, with all the money, Hans's mother asked the witch to remove the curse from Tenderbury Castle. And then they ended up buying it, and they brought peace and prosperity to the region. And that's the end of Count Lucanor. Oh, GG's. Yeah. Alright. So, do you have any final shoutouts to make before oh, yeah. we're um, gonna hand it over? Yeah, so if you guys like uh, horror games, uh, just make sure to give my channel a follow at Jason Vader. Um, I play a lot of uh, horror. Uh, right now I'm playing through the uh, Fatal Frame series. 
but I do a lot of casual kind of uh, chill vibe playthroughs of stuff. Um, and also, I just want to do a quick shout out to my stream team, The Clock Tower. Um, in fact, I think one of us is uh, Demonic is actually running count or uh, We Happy Few later today. He's another member of The Clock Tower. And that's it. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much uh, for this awesome run. Thanks for having uh, me. Coming up next is Jekyll with Hotline Miami. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after a short break. 